Hello and welcome to the gallery. My name is Jon, and today we're going to paint Fafnir Run. I don't know what it is, but I have this uh, particular thing for Imperial Fist. It might be because finally when I figured out how to paint yellow armor, I found out that I really like painting it. It's simple and it's easy, and of course I will be using an airbrush for this, but uh, it's quite easy to do with a brush as well. A little bit more work, but you can get quite interesting results using simple methods as well. So let's start with the yellow armor of Falcon Run, and then we will move on to more interesting bits. So here we have the model. Well, I have it in a few sub-assemblies. It's uh, the body, it's the shield, it's uh, the base and the head and the backpack is all uh, separate. We're starting from a, a white undercoat and we're just uh, putting a little bit of shadows there with uh, a pink uh, ink. Now I'm using an airbrush and as you can see I'm getting quite uh, thick pink out in there. We will lighten this up a little bit again with uh, the white paint. But you can attempt, I haven't tried it myself, but I would be willing to see somebody do it before I do it because I don't want to waste the time to do it. You can attempt to do the same thing with a pink undercoat, dry brushing white on it, maybe layering a little bit of white and then going over with maybe a yellow contrast paint might be interesting to look at. Now after everything is dry, the ink is dry and everything, we start by putting down a little bit of yellow orange ink, which is a ink I bought in some random hobby store here in Iceland, and I spray that over the white and the pink, and you get this lovely li little contours in there, a little bit of shadows, and it gets really, really interesting. And doing Imperial Fists or whatever yellow armor you want like this is really, really fun. You get quick results, and they look spectacular. I'm not inventing the wheel here. There's a lot of guys out there that have been making videos about this method and I've tried it a little bit before I saw those videos, but I love it. Now, because this is a character and we kind of want to do him justice, I'm going to add a little bit extra highlight. So I'm using Flash Kids Yellow and I would recommend thinning your paints when you're putting down layers of stuff to get a little bit more highlights, but Flash Kids Yellow is Thin as all buggery to begin with, so we don't have to thin it that much. I put a little bit of uh, flow improver with it, not water. I don't want it to dry chalky. Flow improver helps a little bit more to give it a little bit more working time. And then I'm just layering a little bit more extra highlights just so it pops a little bit more of the armor. I will give it a little bit of edge highlight here and there, but there aren't really that many edges on this guy because of all the paneling and the decoration and everything. Next, we're just going to use Cycro Brown contrast paints, and I'm just running that into all the recesses that are necessary. There are some under the, on his back and stuff like that, which nobody's going to see. And even though I'm putting my time and effort into this guy, I'm not going to lose my mind over stuff like that. Also, I'm making a few scratches here and there on the armor, and I'm starting by, by putting a little bit of Cycro Brown in those scratches, and then a little bit of Flash Kids Yellow on the under, underside of the scratches, and later on we will fill in the scratches with some silver. So now we finished off the yellow armor and now it's time to do a little bit of details, a little bit of metallics, a little bit of darker color, something to give the yellow a little bit more oomph. After all the yellow and uh, armor itself is done, let's start working on the decorations of it. And there are quite a few on this model because it's a character figure and he wants to look good, so we're going to make him look as good as I'm going to get. We're starting out with all the emblems that are going to be black and white, so we're starting by putting a little bit of white. It's a Vallejo airbrush uh, paint, but it's quite thin, flows, and it dries quite smooth. So we're using that and mixing Corvus Black back and forth, just getting a little bit of interest to it. So we're starting out with a little bit of white, then putting down the black base coat on top of that. And then we're just mixing in a little bit of white into the black to get some highlights going. And we're just layering in a little bit of highlights here and there. And there is uh, small black details here and there all around him. Some on his uh, shoulders, of course, as you can see, and then a little bit on his chest, a little bit on his belt, a little 
bit here, a little bit there, nothing too fancy, a little bit on the pauldron, a little bit more. And then after everything is dry of the black, we're just going to put in a little bit of white into it and layer in a little bit. And we're using thin paints with layering, so it flows a little bit better and it mixes a little bit better on the model and looks a little bit more smooth. As you can see, now it's a little bit more lighter than the chorus black which is not of course a pure black it's kind of a gray bluey black i like it it's much more interesting than just black black we want to have a little bit of warmth to it well or coldness in this case and then just adding a little bit more white into the mixture and we're getting this lovely lovely highlights and shadows with only using the two colors and just mixing them together Also be careful to have always your next layer a little bit thinner than the layer before, so you get this gradient of colors. Like you see here, now it's just little dabs of almost white, but not too much. And then of course he has got a lot of pink on him, because that'll work well, especially on this model since I use the pink undertone. Then you still have that pinkish undertone underneath all the orangey yellow goodness. So, a little bit of pink there, screamer pink on all those ribbons dangling from his uh, codpiece. And then on the gun holster, the handles of the blades, just a little bit of extra color. Because he's going to be the yellowy color and he's going to have a lot of dark gloomy bits. So this will pop it a little bit, give it a little bit more warmth and it's quite fun. You have to be careful because... He's gripping the weapons in his hands and you have to maneuver underneath his armpits and everything to get to all the parts of the weapons, but it's not too much of a hassle. And then just slop some non-oil shade on it. Don't have to be too fancy with it because we will be highlighting this up again after the non-oil is dried. We're going to layer in a little bit of Screamer Pink again just to get that mid-tone again. And once that that uh, Screamer Pink is dry, we're just highlighting just on the edges a little bit here and there with a pink horror. It's on the edges of the card piece dangly bits. I don't know what you're going to call it. Looks cool though. I wouldn't want to walk with it. And uh, we're just going to put a little bit on the top of uh, the weapon hilts. Nothing underneath. We want to keep that zenithal feeling that we had originally from the undercoat. So it would look weird to put some extra highlights underneath the weapon hilts or something like that. And then around the edges of the gun holster that's on his back. And that's basically the pink bits done. We have a little bit of green details to go into now. And that's... A couple of grenades, one on the front, one on the back. We're not going to do anything fancy with them. I'm base coating them with Castellan Green, which is just slopping the green on it. Took off two coats because the yellow was quite prominent underneath. And of course I hit the camera because why wouldn't you? And then I just uh, layered in a little bit of auric flesh on top of that. Next is the metals, and there are a lot of metals on this. This was the most time-consuming bit of the entire process. He's got metal and interest, interesting bits all around the damn guy. There are rims, there are deck cores, there are this and that. It's everywhere. So I just took my time, put on some music into my ears, and started putting in the paint. And as you can see, a lot of metal's done. And it was quite fun. Then I got a thinner paint and I went into all the rivets on him. And also I sliced it into all the crevices of the gashes I've made earlier with the darker paint. And this was fun. <laughs> Next is uh, putting in a little bit of shade into all that metal. I was using lead belcher to begin with, which is kind of a darker metal than I'm used to painting. And then I used the silicon grey contrast paint, a little bit thinned out with contrast medium. And I put that into all the metals. You have to be quite careful so you don't go overboard around all the decors. But it's okay if it goes a little bit into the edge. It'll give it a nice, uh, clean recess shade if you are careful, which I was attempting to be. And once all this shade everywhere was dry, I started layering in a little bit of silver, a Vallejo airbrush silver. It 
runs so smooth i love painting with this and i just ran it all over the edges over the top of everything to get that zenithal feeling again and of course a little bit on the blade of the axis because we want them to have this little bit ferocity a little bit war a little bit worn as well as you can see getting a little bit on the edge and then dashing it up a little bit just to get that cleaving feeling to them And of course, on all the small decors, you have to get that little bit of highlight on there as well. So I got a smaller brush, thinner paint, and tried to be as careful as I possibly could. That's basically the only way to do it. Now, the power source on these axes, I wasn't trying to do anything fancy, not inventing any wheels here again. Just Temple Guard Blue into the line and then all around it and into the blade a little bit a little bit of aethermatic uh, blue contrast paint thinned it out a little bit it's thin to begin with but i wanted it a little bit more thun thin thun that's a word now and just to get a little bit more extra look to it and for all the jewels i found my old tub of spirit stone red technical citadel paint and into all the jewels just a little bit of dab here and there just to give it a little bit of extra oomph. Now since the boy is fully dressed and everything looks awesome, let's give him a face to fit the armor and put some interesting base underneath him made from random crap from uh, my desk. Right, we're almost there. We're right at the finishing line. Now it's just the face and the base left to do, starting out with the face. I'm painting this really, really close to the model. I have my headlamp on, I have my magnifying goggles on, and my face is almost at the end of my fingertips. I want to see what I'm doing in this case, so I'm really focusing. Uh, that's the reason why you get this weird blue lights everywhere in this paint, uh, painting process. I'm starting out with Barbarian Flesh from Army Painter. Using it very thin, thinning it with uh, uh, some uh, flow improver, not some water, because the water makes it dry a little bit quicker in my opinion. So I'm using flow improver, and then I'm layering in Flayed One Flesh on top of that, thinned again with flow improver. And I'm using it very, very thin, many, many, many layers. That's the only way I feel this is going to work and look somewhat okay, because I am not a fan of painting these small faces. Next, I used Reichland Flesh Shade, and I thinned that with a little bit of Lamia Medium, and I'm just getting that into the recesses, maybe a little bit here and there where it's not supposed to be, but I can brush it away fairly quickly when you're this close to the thing and see well what you're doing. And as you can see, it's just on the sides of the heads. It's uh, in all those wrinkles and it's everywhere like that. Now, after that is dry, I'm coming in again with the flayed one flesh and just re-establishing those mid-tones I was working on earlier. And then adding a little bit of white into the flayed one flesh to get even brighter highlights to get some natural feeling to the thing. And as you can see, it's starting to look somewhat okay. Next is the horrible bit, eyeballs. And these were not looking good to begin with, I can tell you that. They looked uh, like a oogly-eyed mofo. So I tried to fix it, I put in my little black spots as his irises, and they hit around roughly the right area. So I let it slide, no reason to repaint this, just try to fix what I was doing. And we're gonna do that with a normal oil. I put a little bit around the eye, and like I said, I'm really, really close to it. So I can see where I'm hitting it, just around the eye. And it worked out well enough have I seen better eyes? Oh yeah. Have I painted better eyes? Yeah, even that. But I've seen them far worse and I've done them far, far worse. So I let it slide and moved on to the next bit of the head. And we're going for a old, uh, darker, brownish uh, thing. We're not going for a young guy. We're getting a little bit of gray into the brown. So I'm starting with dryad bark as the base coat for the hair. Then I'm layering in a little bit of Bane Blaine Brown, bleh, Bane Blaine Blaine, Bane Blade Brown on top of that. And I'm also giving it some eyebrows because too often these guys seem to shave their eyebrows. Or they don't just grow on a status, who knows. I like eyebrows on them, so I put eyebrows on them. 
And yes, uh, after that, I put in a little bit of Bane Blade Brown, just gave it a little bit of layering, and then added a little bit of white into the Bane Blade Brown, just to give it a little bit of extra highlight, so it looks a little bit older, worn, graying a little bit, a little bit more flavor to it. And that's the face mostly done. The bits around the head, I just used the same methods I used for the entire body, and then that bit was done. And as you can see, a little bit more grey in the sideburns, in the side of the head, just to give him a little bit more wisdom. Why not? You need to have wisdom when you're dual wielding great big battle axes into a battle against, uh, well, everybody. <laughs> And the base, we're not doing anything fancy. Put down some rocks, glued them, a little bit of texture paint around it. Then I just spray painted it with a Corvus Black. And now I'm starting to dab in a little bit of Ashen Grey here and there. I'm not dry brushing Ashen Grey. I'm just getting a little bit of extra color on it. I'm leaving the shadows black, but getting some extra color on the rock. A little bit more flavor to it. After I finished with the Ashen Grey, I moved over to Storm Worm and Fur which is still grey, but has this slight hint of brown in it. It's not brown, it's just got this little extra feeling to it. So I dry brushed that quite thickly on everything, just to give it a little bit more depth, a little bit more flavour. And after that dried, I put some Administratum grey just on the highest points, on the edge of it, on the topmost part of the rocks, just to have a little bit of extra look to it. And then after this is all dry, a little bit of aqua exerciate here and there, just to give it a little bit more something different. It was all various tones of grey. I wasn't really feeling it. It needed a little bit of grimy, dirty dirt to it. So a little bit of aqua exerciate goes a long way. I'm not soaking the damn thing in it, just putting a little bit. And then once I do the model, it looked too pristine, if I must uh, be honest. So a little bit of brown pigment powder dabbed here and there and on the legs and everywhere on the bottom just to give this really dirty battlefield look to it. And here we have him, Fapnir Run. It's definitely not my best paint job, but I like him. I spent an uh, evening and a half on him and he's definitely worthy for my shelf, so he's not going into the drawer. It had a lot of interesting bits to it, and it was quite a lot different than my usual Imperial Fist uh, model I've painted. It's got a lot more decor to it and a lot more feeling to it. And I'm happy with the results at least. Thank you very much for joining me here today. There are links in the description for all kinds of stuff, and social media and various tidbits. You do with it what you will. Like, share and subscribe and let the colors flow. But until next time, farewell. <laughs>